All right, I'm going to talk about technologies for, uh, well, you can see that. We're going to talk a little bit first about anaerobic digestion, which I hope, well, mostly y'all in this audience, it'll be nothing new. And then we'll talk about specifically for uh, doing the impossible, digesting flush slime manure or dilute slime manure. Um, anaerobic digestion, as most of you will know, is basically in the most simple concept with heat and we, we mix a reactor, what goes in, what comes out, and my, we reduce the uh, organic matter and convert that to biogas. The two important concepts to know, again, uh, kind of review, is the hydraulic retention time, which is basically uh, for all-in, all-out digester, would be the volume of the reactor divided by the amount entering or leaving per day. And why this kind of might be important, you have to remember that for a given HRT, say we need to keep our, uh, our microbes in there for 30 days, then 30 times your volume is going to be the volume of the reactor. So it's directly related to the size of the reactor or vice versa. What the uh, microbes really are experiencing is more or less the solids retention time, or how long, if we consider the microbes as solids, how long the cells would be retained in the reactor. Um, it's not a very good word, but low rate reactors, basically your hydraulic retention time and your solids retention time are the same. Uh, the most typical one being a continuously stirred reactor. And contrary, this is actually a dairy reactor. So when uh, Becky was giving us a tour last two years ago at the uh, Manure Expo, this is the uh, Dane County Community Digester. But originally, um, if you go back far enough, if you go back far enough that I do, in 1980 something, we were actually were doing more digestion of slime manure than we were dairy manure, at least at the university level. Uh, some of the early work, you can see if you remember the names going back about my generation, uh, Missouri, uh, Nebraska, and Illinois all had farm scale digesters for slime manure. In general though, they were using about 3% or more solids content manure. And HRTs range from 18 to 20 days from what I was seeing from the literature. An important concept that we're going to continue talking about today is the methane yield of these digesters or the amount of methane per, per uh, uh, mass of volatile solids added was about 0 0.22 to 0 0.25 cubic meters per gram of volatile solids excuse me, liters per gram, which is about the same as we're getting out of dairy digesters, more or less. So basically, if you've heard people, you can't, I was actually, when I was at the Dane County Digester, somebody says, too bad we can't digest swine manure. Well, back in the good old days, they were getting about the same as we were with dairy manure. Okay. Now, the problem we have, and most people in the southern swine growing uh, area, is we have flush manure, or in our case, we have a lot of pull plug barns. Or most of our barns are pull plug. 98% are pull plug. The manure that comes out of that is less than 1% total solids. A lot of times it's less than half a percent total solids if the guy's pulling the plugs as frequently as they should. So there's a lot more volume of manure. Uh, this particular farm was a, one of the smaller ones these days, a 500 cell uh, unit with an off-site nursery. So we're talking for a 30-day HRT. On this size farm, you would have a 900 cubic meter digester. If you get to the more typical size farms, a 2,500 head, you're going to see, well, by God, you just have a lagoon. And in fact, for most of these wastes in the United States, we're using covered lagoons as anaerobic digesters. And there's really nothing wrong with that. But typically in our part of the world, if they're based on NRCS standards, we end up with about a 60-day HRT. The SRT is anybody's guess. The sludge stays in there for 10 or 20 years. Does, is that really the SRT? Nobody knows. Uh, Courtney Cow Cowley just did a survey for her PhD thesis in ag economics. She found the average of these guys were yielding about 0.16, so much lower or 80% of what the uh, completely mixed digesters. So it's not really, uh, we can produce electricity or we can produce gas. In, in our part of the world, it's also seasonal. We get a lot more gas production in the summer than we do in the winter. 
um, which isn't bad if your main use of electricity is for ventilation, for heat control. But let's look at using high rate systems, which for a high rate system, basically the definition is that your sales retention time is much greater or can be great, much greater than the hydraulic retention time. I'm going to go through a number of systems if I don't mention one that you're particularly fond of. Uh, the first one is uh, using a fixed film, packing a column, letting a biofilm grow on that. Generally, we're going to separate the manure before it goes into the packed column. Number one, because the swine manure will clog that column. And also because these type reactors work much better for soluble material, the soluble organics versus the uh, suspended organics. Uh, going way back to Missouri again and <coughs> in the mid 80 sievers, worked with some uh, packed columns with swine manure. They got it down to an HRT of about six days and they were getting pretty good methane yields of 0 0.4 uh, cubic meters per kilogram. But remember, they've already separated out of the solids. So you may have already removed 40% of your potential di potentially digestible material. So that would be back to about a 20 for the entire farm, 20 cubic, 0 0.02 cubic meters per kilogram. Uh, another system that's been looked at is uh, Nut flow anaerobic sludge blanket. Basically, we are lifting the solids off the bottom, continuously recirculating the liquid so that we're, we're keeping suspended solids within the digester. Got to be very careful that you don't put too much upflow pressure or you lose your solids. In fact, one of the main drawbacks of these type systems is if you get a slug of solids to go through, you'll blow out all your solids and then it goes on your uh, this is used in industry quite a bit. Uh, there were a group of Russians called Nyushki at uh, working in the Netherlands on this type of system. They were separating the liquids, separating the solids before the digestion, so they're only digesting the manure liquids. They got down to an HRT of one day, and you'll pe hear people with the brewery industry that say we can do it in six hours. It's because they have completely soluble material. And they were getting around 0.5 cubic meters. Again, they've taken out the solids, so you've lost quite a bit of your potential. Another type of uh, kind of a upflow blanket, blanket, they'll have a suspended material within there so that you'll get attached growth. Uh, they can use sand, but back when uh, Kills was doing this in Auburn, I think they settled on using more of a fabric uh, as a material, a media. Uh, I believe Hill uh, was doing it with uh, complete manure. I'm not sure about the, the people from, uh, I think they're from Taiwan. Uh, they got it down to uh, HRTs, two to five days. Really good uh, methane yields, particularly if they're using the complete manure stream. Another system, one that we're going to talk the rest of the morning about, or at least my talk, is an anaerobic sequencing batch reactor. Okay. In concept, it's a very simple system. You fill your reactor and then you mix it or you re let it react for a period of time. You settle out the solids, you decant the liquids off the top. So in effect, you're keeping all your microflora then you fill it again, you got the same solids you keep going. Okay. Simple in concept, sometimes not so easy to do. Uh, Dick Dagg at uh, Iowa State back in the early 90s. We have a lot of sequencing batch reactors that are not anaerobic, they're aerobic. You blow air through this reactor, it lifts all the solids, you sell it, it works really fine. So Dave said, why don't we do that with anaerobic digesters? And it did work fine, at least at the laboratory level. <laughs> um, uh, Dr. Degwa found that we can get an HRT of about five days to get a uh, uh, optimum of methane production. And NGNA, working with Soong at Iowa State, was getting pretty good methane yields of the total uh, manure mass. So 0 0.46 cubic meters per uh, gram of all solids using the entire inflow. Well, you, you notice that had a schematic drawing for most of those systems because a lot of them never left the laboratory. This is one we've actually put. We have an anaerobic sequencing batch reactor 
at our swine farm at Oklahoma State University. This is the uh, digester as it looked. Can't see it, but we were burning gas. We have a uh, flexible cover. Um, if I give a talk on what we would do again, if we had the chance to do it again, and hopefully we will have a chance to do it again. Uh, the flexible cover turned out to not be such a great idea. And those that are in the business of building digesters, we can discuss that uh, at length. Um, this is where it's located on our farm. We use some double L buildings, which is a company out of Northeast Iowa, basically mobile homes for hogs. We have a whole bunch of buildings, have a sewer line. Uh, we have the ability to go to our basically our backup system, which is a covered lagoon, two cell anaerobic, aerobic lagoon. And then we actually have 25 acres that we do subsurface irrigation. So this was just one part of, uh, of our farm. This is the digester itself. We, can, we have a splitter box. We can go through the digester system. Uh, consists of basically the pit to collect the manure. Uh, we have an equalization tank where we can store almost a whole week's worth of manure before we, and then feed it two or three times a day to our sequencing batch reactor. And we, we are able to some extent to raise and lower the volume of that reactor. But when it's completely full, it's about 400 cubic meters in volume. Okay. When we got started, we were literally, we were expecting to have a lot more thinner manure. As it turned out, we got about 20 cubic meters per day, and that's at roughly 0.9% solids, or 9,000 milligrams per liter total solids. Uh, we have the 400 cubic meter reactor, so we have a 20-day HRT if we just put our manure in. Uh, what was coming out of the decant, we got about a 65% reduction in volatile solids. Uh, we were accumulating solids in the reactor, so you, you do see that there was some settling of the, when it's in the react phase, then we settled. We did get some reduction in We were retaining solids in the reactor, that's what I'm trying to say. Uh, with that retention, we were able to get 51 day SRT. So, and we had very good methane yield, 0.55. The bad news is that since we have such a large reactor and such thin liquid, the actual gas produ produced per volume of reactor is really low. Uh, those that are in this room that are in the business of selling these systems, probably anything less than one. A cubic meter of methane per cubic meter reactor, you're going to say, why bother? Uh, but anyway, that's what we were getting. Now, uh, Dr. Degwood said that we should be able to get optimum conditions with five day HRT, so this is what we did, which in hindsight probably wasn't such a great idea. We took the manure and we diluted it seven to three. Another 70% of all the liquid going in was actually uh, water effluent recycled from our lagoon, which was very low solids content. Okay, so we start out with a very low uh, organic matter going into our reactor. This would be about a 0.2% uh, of all the solids, about 2,000 milligrams per liter. Uh, we, we, we were actually retaining fairly well, but we're, uh, we were able to lower our volume a little bit. We ended up with a five-day HRT. We couldn't retain as many solids in the reactor, so we have a 60, 26 day SRT. And our gas production suffered, I guess you'd say, as a result of that. So what we were actually getting was a little bit better than a complete mixed reactor. But we didn't stop there. We went back to the laboratory, started tinkering with things, and now confidently we can say that with a much more dilute manure, uh, we can retain up to, right now we're at about half a percent of all the solids within the reactor, all the spin solids. We think we can do better than that. Uh, then we, we can uh, waste some sludge. We're getting about a, actually we're getting around right now, just with decanting, we're getting about a 300 day SRT, which we then can adjust downward. And we're finding that we're getting the same uh, methane field as we were with the larger solids concentration. Uh, and so we're getting, but uh, and that would be about a 70, 0.7, so like everybody else in the room probably, we're looking at co-digester products, 
Uh, with glycerol, we were getting about six times the gas production. So doing it before we could crash the digestion, about 1% per volume, we were getting, instead of 0 0.7, we would get 3.5. So it became a very efficient digester. At that, uh, that's, there's my contact information. You can find that paper, the Hamilton Steel came out last November. Uh, you can steal it uh, out of a uh, transaction of ASAPE. You can go to my website and you can download the document. Steal it from ASAPE. Any questions? Um, I have a question. Since you are recycling, all of the solids are recycling for the second slash reactant. So that's where the solids will all accumulate after one year or two years. In theory, yes. Yeah, so. <laughs> Actually, that is, that's not a problem. That's what we were hoping to do. We're hoping to accumulate solids, and in the bottom of the reactor, we have uh, a, we can siphon the, the solids off the bottom. Then we go to a sludge drying bed. That would implant. So we we're finding out with this lower solids concentration that we weren't accumulating uh, solids near the rate that we were hoping. They just seem to disappear, and that's kind of what they were found out. So we have a real, uh, uh, in, in the full scale reactor, we weren't mixing it, we were, the way we were mixing and decanting, we were losing a lot with the uh, with the decanting. That's why we couldn't be hiring a lot of people. So our problem was we weren't accumulating solids, not that we were. But that's actually the, the point, is that we would try to accumulate solids in the dry and you said, have you ever tried to exactly target it and calculate it? Yeah, we are now in the laboratory. Uh, what happened was we lost a lot of solids occasionally in our control system. We would try to decant while we were still mixing. Then we were able to figure out how much solids we, we wasted that way. So we, we were wasting, um, I can't give you the number, but it's in the paper. 